Hello, everybody. Howdy. It's been a while. Yeah, it has, hasn't it? Yeah, over a month, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not keeping track of the time, but I know it's been a while. And well, if I look like I'm kind of, because i got a stiff neck. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you sleep with dogs and they're hogging the bed. I know. <laughs> yeah. But um, we did want to do this together and cover this because... No, the, excuse me, because it's just this simple. <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right. It's just this simple. <laughs> and it's one of those things that I wish we could get every single Jehovah Witness to look up and read and think about what Russell was saying. That's the key word. Think about what he put in print. Yeah. Because in all honesty, it's just as valuable today as it was what... Oh, wait a minute. New light. New light extinguishes old light. I mean, if if you got to play that whole watchtower new light thing, like, because you know as well as I do, we've heard so many Jehovah's Witnesses say, Boy, isn't it good that we don't think that way anymore? <laughs> And they don't even, they still use that quote, and yeah. they don't realize that in the New Silver Bible, it's actually been changed, right. and when you read the context, it's like, <laughs> you guys look like a bunch of morons, you know, or dumbasses, mm -hmm. because it doesn't even say that anymore. No, no, mm -hmm. so I guess maybe what we should do is read what um, Russell said back then about New Light. <laughs> Yeah, there's a few things to cover in this article. Yes. Now, what is interesting is Russell is their founder who allegedly restored true worship. That's what Watchtower says. Yeah, at least they did in the past. Now they throw him under the bus and it's like, what a wackadoodle, you know, in his <laughs> beliefs. Wackadoodle, is that a technical term? Yeah. It is, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing they don't believe that way anymore, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you'll never hear that word come out of a psychologist's mouth, wackadoodle. Well, yeah, because they are more PC. <laughs> yes, but we're not PC in this channel. Oh, no, we just tell it the way it is. That's one good thing about being older and retired is pretty much, eh, whatever. You, you can get away with a whole lot more, huh? <laughs> yeah. How many times have we heard, oh, just, they're just old, senile, simple-minded people? A lot. Especially in this community. Yeah. Some just still don't get it, friends. Yeah. Oh, well, that's their prerogative. Okay, so what I have is the Old Bond Volume. This is February 1881. Now, I want to thank the viewer very much who sent this to me, and I believe they found it on social media somewhere, the small quote. So I dug out the Bond Volume, and I read this article, and it's like, oh, my goodness, this is a good one. Um, like I mentioned, it's the February 1881, and if you have the reprint, it's on page 187. And thanks to Atlantis, we all have the reprints, and I will put the link down below to this particular magazine so you can look it up yourself. The name of the article is Cast Not Away, Therefore Your Confidence. <laughs> now, the reason for this article... I'll just give you a little bit of context here because I'm not going to read this whole thing, especially when it's little tiny print that I have a difficult time seeing. Anyway, this is after the Great Disappointment of 1874. Uh-uh, uh-uh. It applies for the great disappointment after the generation that's dead and gone buried. <laughs> that's another great disappointment. <laughs> this is true. 1975, another great disappointment. great disappointment. Well, that's why we, you know, affectionately call ourselves the screwed generation, because that pertains to 1975. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And of course, you know, Let is still the final part of the last days. Yeah. You know, that nonsense. He's basically doubled down on that. <laughs> and his line is so talk. comical. Yeah, this is why we have way too much fun. So thank you for joining us in this humorous, entertaining video. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go over to page 188 in the first col column. And it's the first paragraph at the top 
during the last six or seven years, now remember, the, after the great disappointment, six or seven years ago was the great disappointment. But that also applies to the generation that's now buried and gone. <laughs> that's a great disappointment. So it all applies today, friends. Yeah. The Lord has been leading us, His people, in a very remarkable manner. As we look backward, we can see that our pathway has been a shining light. Shining more and more. Bullshit! <laughs> it has been progressive, bringing us strength with meat in due season. It has caused us to grow both in grace and knowledge. And this growth, taken in connection with the fact that we are not obliged to look back and now call darkness what was then called by some of the brethren a great flood of light is the very strongest grounds for confidence that the same Lord who then supplied us light from the word is still providing of the same kind. We say then, cast not away your confidence in our leader, the great shepherd of the sheep. Well, apparently he got some things wrong. Well, he got 1914 and that generation wrong because now it's overlapping. <laughs> when, when does that run out, Jehovah's Witnesses? Oh, never. Well, they obviously have some severe communication problems. With the Lord, yes. Severe communication And the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yes. Even to this day. It's not changed. If we were following a man, undoubtedly it would be different with us. Okay, now wait for it. Listen carefully to what he says. This is like gold. Undoubtedly, one human idea would contradict another, and that which was light one or two or six years ago would be regarded as darkness now. Oh, my <laughs> God. A good thing we don't believe that way anymore. Jehovah's Witnesses won't even look at old literature that isn't on JW.org right. because it's old light and it's apostate now. <laughs> Do you see where we're going with this? <laughs> well, so... In, in context, would that not mean then that the New Testament is of man and the Old Testament is of God? Think about that, friends, in light of what she's reading. Well, I just had an email from someone, and they left their Baptist church, and they asked their pastor, you know, I forget the exact, you know, question, about details between the gospel and other things. And then he said, oh, well, that was written for the Hebrews, the Israelites, and this was written for the Greeks. Isn't well, it supposed to be one Bible? Let me interject this, because I was watching a video this morning, and this content creator had a clip from uh, Al Sharpton on MSNBC, and Al Sharpton was saying something to the effect that... Um, if Moses was compared to Pharaoh, uh, I God, I wish I could remember the whole thing um, because it, it's just absolutely ridiculous the way he tried to frame it. Basically, Moses was better than Pharaoh. That's why he was needed to lead the nation of Israel. But I want you friends to think about this. How many people did Pharaoh slaughter because they were worshiping a false god? None. How many people did Moses slaughter because they were worshiping the false cow? Everybody. <laughs> you know, this, this nut job, Al Sharpton, doesn't know his Bible any better than this nut job Russell did. Okay, now I'm going to read that again, just for emphasis. If we were following a man, which is italicized, undoubtedly it would be different with us. Undoubtedly, one human idea would contradict another, you mean flip-flop? Flip-flop. And that which was light, light one or two or six years ago would be regarded as darkness now. But with God, there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, and so it is with truth. Wait for it. Here's the gold gem. Any knowledge or light coming from God must be like its author. A new view of truth never can contradict a former truth. So then the overlapping generation contradicts the fact that Watchtower printed in multiple um, publications that the generation of 1914 
would still be here to see the start of the Great Tribulation. That's your contradiction, Jehovah's Witnesses. So it's not from God, it's from men. So I have to admit, I agree with Russell on this one. Yeah, I would too. Why did God allow Watchtower, Jehovah's Witnesses, to believe a certain way for decades? Decades. And then change and flip-flop. See, according to Russell, then that is from a man. From a man. Not God, because there is no variableness with God. Simple. <laughs> Why did we see this for 40-something years? Well, because we were, um, we were living in perpetual fear, Kim. Perpetual uh, fear. Just like Jehovah's Witnesses today, they live in perpetual fear fear because they even look at their old literature right here the, all this literature as apostate old light and yet every single one of these just contradicted what Russell printed back then but it's it's perpetual fear Armageddon's just around the corner well, if, if you leave Jehovah's organization, where are you going to go? Uh, if, if, if you look at the Bible in a negative light, God's going to hate you. Every religion yeah. perpetuates fear at this level. But what they don't realize, Kim, is that when they're perpetuating this fear, those people become multi-billionaires. And unlike Al Sharpton, you'll never see a Jehovah Witness um, on MSNBC. <laughs> now here is Russell's quote, and he even has it in quotation marks. And this is the important quote. New light never extinguishes older light. End of quotation. Let that sink in. New light never extinguishes older light, but adds to it. If you were lighting up a building containing seven gas jets, you would not extinguish one uh, every time you lighted another, but would add one light to another, and they would be in harmony, and this go give increase of light. So it is with the light of truth. The true increase is by adding two, not by substituting one for another. So this is a direct opposite of what Watchtower has done after Russell died. Right. So how does the overlapping generation add to the fact that you stated, Watchtower, that that generation will not pass away until all these things occur, including seeing the start? of the Great Tribulation. How does the overlapping generation add to that? It doesn't. It takes it away. Well then uh, Russell is going to go into explaining how they, um, you know, the Great Disappointment and how they got it wrong in 1874. I wonder how he would write today regarding the overlapping generation. Oh, the same way. Yeah, going on. Therefore, in mentioning grounds of our confidence, that we are in the shining path under the leading of the Spirit. Yeah, it's evident. We mentioned first that the tendency of present truth is to produce the proper fruit of the Spirit, of which love is the chief. The tendency of our growth in knowledge is to grow in grace. He that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as, even as he is pure. Brackets Jesus. Our pathway has been one of increase of light in harmony with former light. In harmony with former light. Not replacing, not getting rid of, not extinguishing. Well, how is changing their view on blood fractions in harmony with what they stated before that, that led a lot of people to their untimely death by refusing blood fractions? How is that in harmony Jehovah's Witnesses, yeah. it's not because it's a man-made ideology and a man-made religion. Yeah, going on. Thus, we have been led to increase confidence in our leader. 
Let us take a glance backward at the steps of progress and let all notice that the progress is not only forward but upward, i.e. the tendency is from the natural to the spiritual. We will look not at any one person's experience but at what served to show the advance of the knowledge of truth for ten years past. Looking back to 1871, we see that many of our company were what are known as Second Advent Adventists, <laughs> and how they believe, you know, the Second Advent of Christ. Okay, now I'm going to skip down. Uh, this they claimed would occur in 1873 because the 6,000 years from the creation of Adam were complete then. But isn't that what Freddie Franz said? In a book that the completion of the 6,000 years of man on this planet ended in September at sunset, 1975? The same way you also, when you see these things occur, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all things are fulfilled. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will by no means pass away. And we who are of this generation, particularly those who were on the scene like Brother Halda John in 1914, they have lived already uh, 61 years into uh, uh, this generation beyond 1914. This generation is uh, pretty well near the close of its life expectancy here upon this earth. And Jesus said, this is going to come within this generation. And so, if we know anything, we know that the kingdom of God in its destructive work toward the devil's organization and uh, the ushering in of the great Sabbath day of which the Lord Jesus Christ will be king, that day, that day and hour which God has fixed is near. And let's not fool ourselves about the matter and start uh, making plans and entering into projects which are not warranted by the lateness of the hour, even if we don't know how long after September 5th, 1975, the time will extend itself. Yeah. Do you Jehovah's Witnesses? not comprehend this what is old which was now which was then as garbage freddie franz made it all new again in 1975. well i wonder it's the if, same thing i wonder if that book which is called then is the finished mystery of god is even available on jw.org probably not because they don't want you to see that okay going on well, 19, er, 1873 came, the end of 6,000 years, and yet no burning of the world. <laughs> but prophecies were found which pointed positively to 1874, as the time when Jesus was due to be present, and the resurrection of Daniel was also due, as proved by the ending of Jubilee cycles and the 1,335 days of Daniel uh, 12. The autumn of 1874, anxiously expected, finally came, but the earth rolled on as ever. All things continued as they were from the beginning of creation. They said, surely we have been in error, but where? Surely it is clearly taught that Jesus will come again. I'm going to skip down a few paragraphs. Dark indeed seemed the outlook. All were discouraged. It had seemed as though the Lord had been leading in the past, and yet now all these things which had been thought light seemed to be proved darkness. He really shouldn't have been writing down his thoughts on this. Thank you, Russell. Because <laughs> we can use it now. Amen, brother. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I'm not going to read this because it goes like over into the next column, but what this is talking is about is then they realized the word parousia did not mean coming physical it meant in the invisible oh new light jesus did come in 1874 but he was invisible russell saved the organization the modern day jehovah witness still will refuse to see it now i thought this was interesting because They've always said that 
Russell restored the truth and that they follow no man, no organization. They follow Jesus, right? So I'm going to go over to page 189 under the subheading, Truth Was the Sickle. <laughs> second column, second full paragraph. Coming to the spring of 1878, the time parallel to the giving up of the Jewish church and ending of the gospel church by the Spirit, we naturally and not unreasonably expected some change of our condition. And all were more or less disappointed with nothing supernatural occurred. But our disappointment was brief, for we noticed that the Jewish church, and not the gospel church, was the pattern of ours. And there's the difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament. It just contextualized in the Old Church and the New Church. So tell me how the New Testament is any better than the Old Testament. Because according to Watchtower, in Russell's words, they both have proved to be a failure. Yeah, well I find it interesting that they he admits that they patterned their church after the Jewish church. Yep. Um, and therefore, we should not expect parallels to Pentecost or to anything which happened in the beginning of this church. You should not expect parallels? Yeah. <laughs> we looked again at the Jewish church as the pattern and saw that though Jesus gave them up as a fleshly house at the close of his three and a half years, ha three and a half years ministry, yet he continued special favor to them afterward saying to the disciples after resurrection that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all the nations. And it just goes on as like, oy vey. And then they go into like the 70 weeks and all of that. So, I mean, Russell trying to undo the great disappointment and um, trying to keep his church together his Bible students together, and uh, I thought that was interesting that new light never extinguishes old light. Yes, it does. Well, yeah. Especially if you're a Jehovah Witness living in, in fear, because you're a fear to make the adjustment mentally and recognize that this organization is just built on man-made theologies. Same thing as the Bible. Man-made theologies. Even though there's a lot of truth that still does get through, the bulk of it is man-made theologies. Exactly. Exactly. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little quote. We thought that was mind-blowing and um, it's just a shame that Jehovah's Witnesses won't go look back at Russell's teachings and his writings. Well at this point they don't have an excuse not to because he said it himself. New light does not extinguish old light. And if it does then the whole key is it's man-made. Yeah. That's all it is. It's just man's theologies. While they're getting filthy rich perpetrating these theologies. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I just wanted to cover one last thing towards the end of this article, which is over on page 191. First column at the top. And now we come nearer to the time when our change seems due. We know not the day or hour, but expect it during 1881. Possibly near the autumn, where the parallels show the favor of Zion complete and due to end, the door to the marriage to shut, and the high calling to be the bride of Christ to cease. And light on that subject is becoming clearer. We see that as the voices and trumpets of First Thessalonians 4.16 are symbolic. So also the clouds are symbolic of the trouble gathering in, or during which we will be caught away to meet the Lord in the air which we find is another symbol and used to represent the spiritual, supernatural uh, control of Earth's affairs now possessed by Satan. So he was basically doubling down. And as we know, um, apparently he was wrong about eight, the autumn of 1881, since we're all still here. 
and apparently Franz was wrong about the autumn of 1975 since we're still here so categorically Jehovah's Witnesses why can you not fathom that they're false prophets why can't you see that oh because fear is that curtain yeah and that's what it all boils down to is they don't want to see it and those yeah. that do see it and want to stay with the organization like my mother Oh, I don't know what it means, but I'm going to stick with Jehovah's Organization no matter what. So, they could tell them the moon is made of Swiss cheese, and they would believe it just because the governing body said so. And the sad thing is, is they live a life in sheer misery because they're expecting something that's never going to happen when they could be investing their time in their family or in the hobbies or in exploring this beautiful planet building better stronger relationships based on real love and not love bombing and their friendships would not be conditional like they are now inside of the organization it's it's just sad when you contextualize how much of their life is lost now and will continue to be lost even though we have all the information right here behind us proving this is nothing but man-made theology and it's really sad because we look back and we've all known someone who has either committed suicide or died for refusing blood transfusion we have all seen this and you look back how many lives have been lost because of this organization's um, policies and doctrines and flip-flopping and stuff and people believed it and they thought they were dying faithful to God and it's just so sad such a waste of human life and I hold Watchtower blood guilty they are blood guilty they have so much blood on their hands that I, I, it just makes you sick to your stomach well, look at how many more lives are going to be lost, even in the future, if they don't get out of this organization. Because they're going to, they're just going to easily get sucked into the next flip-flopping of whatever Watchtower decides to flip-flop. I mean, it just, it's, for me, it's literally incomprehensible. I, I, I can't comprehend it no more when it's just this simple. Well I always look back to how we were when we were first waking up and at first you're kind of in denial because you just don't want to believe what you're seeing in front of your face and then you're traumatized because your entire foundation is pulled out from under you mm -hmm. and you know growing up at JW like I mentioned in my very first video I did is you are told that your faith is going to be tested little did we know it was going to be our actual faith in this organization that was going to be tested and we would have to decide if we were going to stay with them or pursue and research for truth yeah well there again just adding to that it's not so much your religion or your faith being tested now you're being tested as a human being yeah. as to fitness are you fit enough as a human being to accept the fact that you've been lied and bullshitted your entire life I mean look at how much depression we've seen because of people waking up and it does take time to get through this it takes a tremendous amount of time yeah. to get through it and I've even seen you know where some ex-members still can't get through it even to this day even though they've been out for years I mean we just hear constantly oh I'm going back to the organization because I just I just can't stand being a free sovereign spirit so I'm gonna go back to that control mechanism I need to live in that fear it, it, that it's not gonna work because nine out of ten of those people that have told us that have gone back into the kingdom hall or even me in my own setting I cannot stand to watch JW.org 
I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I would rather run my knuckles against a cheese grater than to have to sit and watch these guys. But imagine what it would be like sitting in a kingdom hall and hearing the same thing come out of an elder's mouth. It, going back to the organization is not going to help you. All it's going to do is it's just going to reconfirm that you made the correct choice in the beginning. Get the hell out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? I mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, exactly. And that's why Kim and I, we actually sat in a very unique position right here because so much of this stuff has been communicated to us. It is still being communicated to us because we're one of the few ex-members that publicly put our email out here and ask for information you know and the, all of you viewers have been so great with sending us information I mean so much information that I have to pick and choose what I'm going to cover because mm -hmm. there's just so much um, and along those lines I did have someone contact me and I'm not sure if they were PMO or if they just seen this on social media from PMO that had posted it or not but it said that they had just attended their um, local circuit assembly and pre-COVID there used to be about 1800 in attendance now they just went and it's down to 1200 well you know what that is build more buildings donate more money because we we need all this room to expand they'll never see it well and the fact that they count kids at meetings and conventions so you could probably cut that number in half and that's still quite a bit that's can quite I a bit. just add something to that yeah they're also counting PMOs <laughs> right yeah how many of those in that audience were actually PMOs yeah true see true and so many don't know how many PMOs are actually in their congregation because the PMOs are so good at not outing themselves That's right and but what from what we hear they're like oh this brother or sister might be awake and so they make a comment and come to find out oh yeah they're awake they're a pimo too they're finding, so each, they're other. finding each other in the kingdom halls and out in the field of ministry and so it's great it really is <laughs> and it's really great sitting on this side communicating to everybody what we know in in this regard <laughs> watchtower you have no idea no idea buddies <laughs> yeah in fact let's cover a few protests um that are coming up this year and uh there is we've covered this one before but uh, i was asked to mention it again and i will put the links down below to these so that you can go to the ones who are organizing these and um you know the Be Free 2023 website, they do have most of the information you would need. And so I'll put the link down below. Um, but this one is going to be October 31st, 2023 at the White House Lawn, 10 a.m. to 3.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And their mission is to raise awareness, taking action, and demanding accountability. Yeah. And you can see their mission there. So I will put the link down below to this. And I also have another one here. Thank you, Jonas, very much. There is going to be a peaceful one. Uh, and I'm probably going to mispronounce these cities. Malmo, Sweden, July 8th and 9th of 2023. And Hillerod, Denmark. July 15th through the 16th and this one was on Facebook and so I will put the link down below and I believe it is open to the public so that you can you know you don't need a Facebook account to actually read this information and like I said if there's any questions that aren't on these uh, links then you can contact the person that is putting these together and uh, so I think that's all the news I have <laughs> How much more do they want? <laughs> oh, believe me, I have a lot. Yes, I know, because, well, 
I was privy to the next video we're going to be doing here shortly, and she's actually making me watch something off of JW Dotto again. <laughs> well, it's good because it was gems in this one, and I don't oh. normally watch the JW videos and stuff unless someone sends me the link right. and says, check this out, what they're saying, or I see it on social media and say, oh, look at this, what they're saying. And so this one I had to look, and it's like, okay, do you want to help me with this gem? <laughs> because when I started getting clips for a montage of... <laughs> things Watchtower has done and lied about, it just kept growing and growing and growing. There wasn't any end to the bullshit, was there? <laughs> no. There are so many clips I have to prove Watchtower is lying again that, I mean, how do you take hundreds of clips and try to narrow it down to just a few so that you guys aren't sitting and watching these clips for hours. You know what that's called? A miracle. <laughs> so I'm taking one for the team. <laughs> yes. And watching all of these. So thank you dear friends for watching and we hope you have a wonderful weekend and we love you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.